worked in, uh, in about three months. I was qualified to be a flagman, and when you qualified to be a flagman, we had many obstacle things that were different today that was an automatic, not in the lockings. And you had hand-thrown switches with a pipe that was connected to a derail. If the caboose or the cars weren't in the clear, you'd throw the switch back, the derail would come up and derail the cars. So you'd be in trouble there, and you had to know these things to be a flagman. And uh, they only handed orders, but you had a train or they only handed them on to the head end. You never got down the hind end. If a train had stopped, well, you'd have to be in the lookout. If you had 40 cars, 60 night time, well, you'd see the cars were going to a bend, you know, turning to the right or turning to the left. You were either going into a siding or crossing over to another track where we had double track and things like that. Uh, to tell you the truth, everybody's looking for something as a landmark or want to have something to keep like an old railroad, an old steam engine or this here. Though. I still say the city of Reading should be proud to have a, a railroad go through the center of the town where the town was built around. And the yard in that and our be uh, the shops that we had, if they was only maintained, the, the most beautiful roundhouse and one of the finest was tore down on 6th Street, which you might have seen. And, uh, well, the man even went bankrupt tra trying to tear it down. It was built so strong. It was supposed to be there forever.
first of all, you know, and I know, like, there's a lot of people, right, it's overpopular, you know, populated. And, like, Reading, Reading's like, um, what would you call it? I think it's like a plain place. Everybody wants to know everybody's business and, you know, from where I live, you know, I don't know if it's like that everywhere. And, like, they don't mind their business, you know. Big towns like New York, you know, they have too many, uh, like, so many people, everybody's just worrying about their own, you know, making it, you know, to survive. In Reading, since, you know, it's not that, you know, that's, that's beautiful about Reading. That's what I like because, first of all, I get along with everybody, like, brothers and sisters. That's what I, that's what I want. That's what's in my heart. And, like, I guess most likely if you go to maybe the big city where all the, you know, fights and stuff are, you know, you'll find that a lot, you know. And probably, like, um... If I was hanging around with somebody white or something, you know, they would, you know, look at me, you know. political movements, it's always been slow to go into extremist politics. But once it goes into those extremist politics, it goes all the way. The Socialist Party is very active in Reading. In fact, it, it, it sent presidential candidates, I think as late as 1948, and had elected several mayors to the city of Reading. The German-American Bund marched through the streets, thousands strong, hundreds, 400 citizens of Reading were uh, under suspicion, and many of them were taken away to so-called concentration camps you? in 1941 to 46, uh, controlling and dominating the uh, life of the people. Reading is a strange town. I've always loved it and hated it. Uh, they always say, if you want to be something big, get the hell out of Reading. I don't know. And that's sort of a negative viewpoint. But then we've been held back, I think, to a great degree by the Chamber of Commerce. Now, in Reading, I've been boycotted by many organizations. The Chamber of Commerce is one of them. They really put the screws to me, prevented me from getting employment in town, did everything possible to get me kicked out of the city. Uh, one time, Jerome Coburn, a councilman, tried to pass a city council ruling prohibiting me from, from walking the streets of Reading, something like that, or distributing literature or doing anything in the city of Reading. So uh, Reading has both been my friend and my enemy. Uh, I've survived amongst Reading and, and, and hated it at the same time. I don't know. I don't want to look at it with a purely negative viewpoint because Reading has some things that are you just don't find anywhere in the world, unique uh, to itself. I don't want to down Reading or anything else. There's a possibility of a future in Reading.
and it is in celebration of the 225th anniversary of the city of Reading. If you can believe it, the city is that old, and a lot of groups are donating their time this afternoon to put on a show for you, and we hope you do enjoy it. We'll be hearing from Katie Winters, Omnibus, the Lehigh Brothers, Gaslight, <laughs> and none other than the Morning Sun, too, so it's an afternoon of really great entertainment. We thank you all for coming on out, and uh, I'm sure we'll have more people here as, evening go as the afternoon goes on. And if
little bit of Beach Boys, Help Me Rhonda, from a couple of summer times ago, right now, Brett Gamble, playing music for you right up until, who might ever guess what, got all kinds of good stuff for you, I want to tell you, it's 78 degrees downtown right now, fine music coming your way, all night long, until they stop me or shoot me down, something like that going on here. drugs that I don't use. I'm an expert on gambling. I've never played a horse in my life. <laughs> um, I'm not blessed, contrary to what I'm supposed to be. I'm not blessed with a high degree of morality myself. Some close associates may well know, which I don't particularly brag about. Um, I have no personal feelings at all about prostitution, one way or the other. I care less about prostitution. Drugs. These people are primarily hurting themselves, with the exception of the heroin problem. They're primarily hurting themselves. I've seen too many of them OD. Excuse me, I've seen too many of them go to the wacky farm because they have uh, got some bad acid or something they thought was mild mescaline turned out to be acid. The gamblers, sure, I got to listen to the wives, but it's that family that's suffering, not me, you know. I have no strong moral feelings, pro or con, on any of them, really. Um, what, I, what I like about vice is the type of work that it is. I can 
tell you how ready he was years ago. Okay. I was born ready. I was born over on 7th Street. Over on 7th Street? 7th Street. That's where he tore. We owned all that real estate up there, see? Where he tore down, down Cherry Street. That was all ours. And uh, this street, years ago, my oh my oh my. Couldn't get through. So many people. It was some city.
Thank <laughs> you.